How fake sneakerhead girls act. Versus how real sneakerhead girls act. This gal needs to walk a mile in someone else's shoes before bringing them down for not being as interested in kicks as her. You can't air force a connection just based off of one thing. For all she knows, a girl who doesn't care about shoe brands might tie this guy's stomach in knots. Or a girl like her could be his soulmate. One thing's for sure, she definitely has to reboot her brain and learn that trying to be a goody two-shoes to impress a guy is truly a mock sin. She's not a pair of vintage Nikes. Her self-worth and value isn't based off of how many people want her. And she might be putting a wedge between herself and gals with different interests instead of being open to kicking up her heels with a potential bestie. You do you. But remember that trainers always come in pairs, so pretending you're the only one who likes them is really just you putting your foot in your mouth. Man, I really do just keep stacking on these intro puns until the video's absolutely clogged with them. Future me is gonna have some big shoes to fill. Okay, I'm done. Wait, I stand corrected. Hey Girl Scout, what's shaking? How have you been? I personally have been awful. I celebrated Christmas with my family, right? And for the annual gift swap, I really thought I was so quirky and creative with my mug warmer idea. And then someone had the absolute audacity to come up with the exact same idea as me. Of all the things in the world, they had to go and copy me. I get it, I'm elite and everyone is jealous of me and they have to copy me because they're boring and their boyfriends are all pining after me and my mom loves me best. But honestly, it's just so lame. Now my family probably thinks I'm not unique enough and I bet they all think I'm like those other basic girls. But I'm not like other girls. I don't even own a pair of Uggs, and I tend to go to Tim Hortons instead of Starbucks for my iced coffee, what other girl could ever claim those things? And seen. For the record, Tim Hortons is just way closer to my house, and I absolutely owned Uggs in the peak of their trend because I did and do still love them. For real though, it was hilarious that the only guidance for the gift swap was the price range, and my brother and I both genuinely thought we picked something different than what our family would expect. Great minds think alike. Or as TikTok would have you believe, soulless sheeple with no individuality occasionally think alike. Yes, I wanted to talk about the not like other girls trend again because I've seen a lot of those videos pop up again recently. It's an important topic to discuss and I always enjoy making them and seeing your thoughts, so be sure to drop them below as we go along. Enough chit chat, let's just jump right into things. POV or a millennial mom who refuses to raise an iPad kid. Timmy, you didn't look excited enough in that last shot. I don't care that you're cold. Smile a bit more when you jump in the snow next time and then we can go. And straighten out your sister's matching Santa hat so it doesn't look like it blew around while she played a bunch. I'm trying to get all this right for TikTok. I told you, TikTok is the name of mommy's closest friend, remember? See, I'm not like other moms. My kids will never use an iPad. And I only use it to film videos of me pretending that we're present in the moment for validation from other moms who boast about not letting their kids use iPads on their social media. Sure, maybe my kids will think that mommy is an iPad, because I always have one in front of my face, but it's better than actually giving them the iPad to see it as a separate entity to me. I mean, what if they like the apps on there better than the games I got from another mommy influencer who was all about not relying on the internet to raise your kids like me? What if they developed an ounce of independence for me and got their entertainment from something other than me? What if my reluctance to discipline them meant that they wouldn't stop using the iPad after a reasonable amount of time because they don't listen to authority? I can't possibly learn to set boundaries or else I'll be some evil dictator instead of their bestest friend. There is no middle ground, so anyone who doesn't stroke my ego was a bad parent. End of. Well, what are you so upset about? Nathan, she's weird. She's a weird child. I think a few days a week of preschool could be very helpful. This is not the right age for Patty to be socially activated. We went She's not the... a bomb. She's a little kid who has no ability to relate to other little kids. You want her to relate to him? I've noticed parenting is a huge one for this not like other girls mindset. How you deal with pregnancy, how you give birth, how you parent, how your family's structured. It's almost like there's no one size fits all for raising a kid. There's a reason a lot of parents try to learn from their parents' mistakes, which leads to their kids learning from their inevitable mistakes when they have kids and so on and so on. If you believe you're trying your best despite your mistakes as a parent, then why shame others who likely have those same good intentions too? I find these not like other moms see things very black and white. There's no, sometimes we go out and play and sometimes I let the kids use the iPad. 
It's always, other moms never play outside with their kids and only use an iPad as a toy. But it's more complex than that. What about the educational games, the electronic books, the digital coloring or crafts? What about the times when a parent has a million things to do and has to do them while their kid is itching to be entertained? Maybe her way of parenting works great for her and her kids, but that doesn't mean the parent who does use an iPad is raising a worse kid. Unless the child's safety is an issue, there really is no reason to drag a parent for their choices. Instead, focus on the similarities you formed over being a parent, because there will always be something that you can relate to. Or be open to learning from their differences. Maybe you don't agree on everything, but there may be something you adopt that you otherwise wouldn't have tried out if you didn't let go of the importance of being different. Other girls at the gym. Me in the gym. Oh my god, you girls go to the gym in leggings and shirts? I didn't realize I was speaking to such basic girls who just follow the crowd. I'm super quirky, so I wear a full-on banana costume to work out. But get this, I also wear a sexy mini dress over the banana costume and then a diaper over the dress. It's like, so random. I guarantee no girl has ever done deadlifts wearing a getup like mine. I'm so different that I even do deadlifts differently. I round my back at the top and then arch it when I lift the bar up. You might call it bad form, but I know the truth. You say you're afraid of pulling your back, but I think you're just afraid of being different. It's okay. Maybe some shallow guy who only cares about looks and sanity will come along and find you amongst all the other leggings wearing girls. But if it turns out he's looking for someone with personality, send him my way, won't you? Oh well, I guess it's time for me to split. <laughs> Get it? I'm in a banana costume. So funny. Enjoy your basic workout with all your basic friends who actually want to hang out with you because you're all actually really nice to each other and I'm really jealous. <laughs> Heck, what's your secret? What? Your secret workout? What is it? Yeah, yeah I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, I know. Hmm. Well, I, uh, first I take my hand and I do this. Are you kidding? Do these muscles lie? Why do these not like other girls bring up the topic of other girls' clothes so often? Isn't what a girl's wearing the thing people say way too frequently to discount assault and harassment? Why feed into that? It's okay to want to cover up, but it's also okay to want to show off. These girls are at the gym working so hard to build a nice booty. Why shouldn't they be proud of that achievement and want to show it off to other people? It doesn't automatically mean that they want only guys to see them for their butts or that they have no self-respect or whatever this implies. Or maybe they are trying to get attention to boost their self-esteem, but they aren't hurting anyone for doing that. They're just working out. You're the one making videos about how different you are for your clothing choice so people can validate you. The worst thing for me here is that she recorded a video where she does show off her butt a ton, but because she's doing it as a joke to bring down other girls who do it, it doesn't count or something because people don't have eyes? Hello, it's called irony. Jokes aside, it's the worst kind of not like other girl to act superior to other girls who do something that you do too. It's pure projection and it will attract the worst kind of people. Girls who base your friendship off of your shared interest of seeking validation via bringing other girls down for their interests and guys who also think all girls want to be objectified, who also objectify you because you are like the other girls because you're a girl, and who will place you on an unrealistic pedestal where you cannot ever admit to your flaws or else you're suddenly just as putrid as all these other females. Your choices are okay and their choices are okay. At the end of the day, you all go to the gym and smash it, and that hard work is something you can appreciate regardless of differences, right? How other models eat on set? How I eat? Not so fast. You might think you're elite and the quirkiest of all those who quirked before you, but I am the self-proclaimed queen of quirk. Ignoring the similarities we share of being models, you consume food like some normie. And me? I produce energy via photosynthesis. I bet you only use the sun for tanning like one of those bikini models. I bet you only eat food because you were brainwashed by the government to think you need physical substance. No wonder people think us models are dumb. Not me. I'm enlightened. I use it to feed my brain, to nurture and grow my ego, and to thrive like the beautiful flower I know I am, which is obviously why you keep calling me a prick, because you know deep down that the most beautiful of roses carry the sharpest of thorns. But yes, keep on eating your salads and using your utensils and thinking you did something, because as long as I sit here ruling the throne of the raw XD so quirky so random kingdom, I'll always need loyal subjects striving to be me. Be right back. I need a quick sunlight snack to top me off before I walk the runway. I know. We can act like plants. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Holographic meatloaf. My favorite! <laughs> 
This one made me laugh a bit because I always remember it being the other way around, with models showing themselves eating things like fries to differentiate between all the basic salad eating ones. Shocker, we've come full circle because there's always gonna be someone out there that eats a certain way and it really isn't that special. Plus, this is just tone deaf. They're about to go out and have their bodies scrutinized by a bunch of randoms. Why focus on making little digs at someone's self-esteem to help yourself when you could both be empowering one another because you share that understanding of how hard that can be? With the insane amount of eating disorders rampant in the industry and the unhealthy coping strategies, strategies models are encouraged to use to stay thin, it's especially in poor taste to use food as the way to boost yourself at the expense of another. No pun intended for a change. Most importantly, who cares if she's eating a bit strangely to avoid smudging her makeup? I mean, if anything, you eating that way is disrespectful to the people who just spent hours perfectly crafting your makeup for your shoot. You're risking smudging it and getting food on your face. Makeup artists are rushed around before a shoot like chickens with their heads cut off, and they can get so much shit if things aren't done on time no matter whose fault it is. Or if the makeup is ruined and caught on camera, it can poorly reflect on the artist. It's even more stressful when you consider that the food looks like salad with dressing, and if it is, dressing is usually oil-based, and oil can make water-based makeup separate, which is hard to fix without starting over once it happens. Yes, I'm a nurse, but not a brain dull butterfly heart nurse. I'm not like other nurses. While they're changing metal bedpans and singing lullabies, I'm listening to the metal version of Pan's Labyrinth lullaby. While they mourn the death of the 80-year-old patient they grew attached to, I mourn the death of real music, the old 80s stuff I grew attached to. While they rush towards the screams of patients who hit their emergency button, I feel a rush when the scream of heavy metal hits me. We're not the same. Nordberg. It's me, Frank. Now, who did this to you? I love you. I love you too, Nordberg. Who were they? But I found this at home, in a drawer. A photograph. I love you out of Caracas. A Panamanian ship. Frank, when Nordberg said, I love you, he was telling you the name of the ship. I realize that now. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like a lot of effort to make a TikTok about how different you are when all you're telling everyone is that you're a nurse and this is the music that you like. Why compare yourself to other nurses? Do you think it makes you better or cooler than them for enjoying a particular sound? What if the people you're trying to get attention from like the same music as you, but they don't like comparison as a means of giving yourself confidence? I just think it's a very toxic mindset to compare, 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 and expect people who aren't toxic to be attracted to that. You're only getting positive comments from people who don't see it as an issue. That may make it seem like it's not a toxic thing to do because of the echo chamber, but if you're hearing a lot of, yeah, I'm not friends with other girls because they're all drama and they don't like to do anything but shop, or anything along those lines, chances are it's because these girls also drag other girls down at any chance to feel good about themselves. And you don't need to do that. You're unique because you're you, and if you're a good person, then you deserve the same good you put out in the world, no matter what someone else tries to say to feel better about themselves. Hi, here are some icks that I have with my own gender, the female race. Okay, ick number one out of, this might be a 10 part series. And you all know this who follow me. Trends. I don't want to see you dress the same. I don't want to see you say the same things. I don't want to see you say Puria. I want you to use your own language. Yeah, girls, use your own language. Like the term ick. Or even better, the female race. Why stop there? English is so basic. Every language is, seeing as other girls speak it, make up your own alien tongue, or else you're gross and she hates you, and her opinion dictates your value. I want you to dress in your own way when you go shopping. Have you ever done that? Here's the thing. Have you ever gone into a store and been like, I resonate with that, not, Oh, this is what I saw on TikTok. Stop it! What if I resonate with something I saw on TikTok? Then what? Does the world end? Is the matrix cracked? Also, it's pretty ick of you to wear jeans and a plain top like other girls do. It's not like some clothing trends are trends because of versatility or being universally flattering or anything. <sighs> now I'm all warmed up. Okay, number two. When girls bring the items that they want to purchase to the cashier on the counter, but then while they're at the cashier, you take everything and you re-unfold it to hold it up and then fold it, put it back down. Re Why are you at the counter? Why are you doing that? And the cashier is standing there like, do you, can I help you? This has never happened to me. Who cares? If observing this happening to someone else, not even to you, to someone else is one of your biggest icks, then I think you have it pretty dang good. I've worked in retail and people do a lot of weird things, but unless they're rude, whatever. Now, third, I do not want this to come across personal. I'm not attacking you. You do you in the way that you do. But if you have 
nails that stretch beyond the sane amount past your fingertip. Not only does it give me the ick, but it actually gives me vivid, tangible stress. The gunk, the food, the grime that is under there. And I, please. Stanion Weinstock and Reisman. Hey, LaRonda. Now I got four people on hold, but I can't talk. Okay, everyone, stop wearing long nails because it triggers her and it's up to us to make sure she doesn't feel grossed out. Doesn't matter if you scrub your nails clean or if you don't even go near her. If you're potentially going to be in her field of view, cut them off. She thinks you're dirty and saving some snacks for later under there. I love the false acceptance of it. Even though you're allowed to do it, she's gonna tell you how disgusting it is and bring you down for it, but it's totally your choice. Number four, this is your big sister talking, okay? Any type of thirst trap or like, I my, my bounce on TikTok or like, oh, I'm at the gym. This is how you just live your life to the full, girl. Must we really truly stoop so low? Yeah, one plus one equals two. A guy's gonna be like, the guys. No shit. See, I don't like that. It icks me out. My big sister talking. Uh, maybe my big sister who's jealous of any positive attention I get, so she's trying to prevent me from getting any under the false pretense of giving me advice. But retro, she's right. You don't have to post thirst traps for attention to feel good about yourself. No, you don't. But she does post them. So why can she tell you what's good and bad to post online if her actions and words don't line up? What I want to do is I want to riddle a man. I want to ask him questions that literally make him sweat. I want to show up to a date wearing this, and then I want to engage him in such intellectual and riveting conversation and humor and wit that he's like, what is the female? It's this, bitch. And it stresses me out because then girls are coming crawling to big sis and they're like, where are the good guys? I don't know. And I'm like, they're on the Instagram being spoon fed, jiggled. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not to say I'm against being your powerful bad bitch self like get it girl but I genuinely think one of the sexiest things a woman can do is have elegance and to walk into a room she doesn't have to take her clothes off to make a difference and to just have an essence of power that is sexy as no one's stopping her from going on her intellectual dates where she's so cool and smart and not like anyone he's ever met before. Pretending you're okay with women having a different opinion to you while simultaneously referring to their different opinion as an ick doesn't fool them into thinking you accept them. Because the ones you're taking a dig at are smarter than you think. You know, because posting pictures of yourself online doesn't dictate your personality or your intelligence. Not every relationship's the same. By all means, if you feel like you're posting pics for validation and that it's affecting your ability to form meaningful relationships, then do the changes you feel you need to do to get to where you want to be. But if you don't want to stop posting pics of yourself, then instead of bending to the will of the guy she deems good, then find a guy who accepts you for you and who is your definition of good. It's over, I promise. I've got so many problems. Hey, nothing that can't be fixed by staring at a lake. High school is such a serious thing. These problems matter. Reasons why I don't fit in this generation. I don't drink. I put my faith and family first. I don't enjoy partying clubbing that much. I'm dating to marry. Reasons why I don't fit in this generation. I don't smoke vape cigarettes. I don't party or clubbing. I don't like drinking alcohol. I keep my circle small. Minding my own business. Body or kiss count don't impress me. I only date to marry. I put my faith and family first. Reasons why I don't fit in this generation. I don't smoke slash vape slash drink. I believe in God and Islam. My family comes first. Reasons why I don't fit in this generation. I don't smoke vape cigarettes. I chase dreams. I don't go to parties. I do self-improvement. I love only one girl. The irony of this being a trend amongst Gen Z about how they're not like the rest of Gen Z is priceless. I think any of us past that age can agree that it's a tough age with a lot of social hierarchy. And I'm sure even more so with the social media driven generation. I think the majority of these kids feel like they have to justify why they're considered outcasts by others to help reduce the hurt. And I also think they're looking for ways to boost their low self-esteem. Most people grow out of it, but I think a lot of people with low self-esteem continue this way way too long into adulthood 
adulthood, especially now in a time where people receive validation from others for doing this on a viral scale, and especially because so many women and men don't fit the stereotypical box of their respective gender. So they want to make sure that stereotype isn't pushed onto them anymore. While I think we've made huge advances at people tolerating others in some ways, the world is absolutely becoming more divided too. By not emphasizing that a difference doesn't automatically make someone better or worse than you, we're encouraging this divisive mindset that roots people's self-worth on how much better they are than others. And the more people who feed into this mindset, the more they tell each other that they're right, on both extreme ends of whatever it is that they're discussing. We see this politically, we see this with categorized types of people like alter basic, we see this with hobbies, the list goes on. I don't know what the solution is or if it even exists, but I do think there's something to be said about making sure people know they can appreciate similarities between them and others while respecting their differences. And I think there needs to be more resources out there for people to truly develop self-esteem based off of no one else but themselves. I'm ugly and I'm proud. Good! Say it louder. I'm ugly and I'm proud. Louder! I'm ugly and I'm proud! What do you guys think? If you agree and want more people to see this message, then please let that algorithm know by liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, and watching till the end. It genuinely helps get that video out there. If you want to talk more about this topic, then consider joining my Discord, link in the description. You can also find my socials there in case you're curious about the gal behind the Danny Phantom PNG. And you can also find my merch shop if you're interested in grabbing something to support the channel too. And that's all from me. Hope you all have an amazing holiday, and I shall see you all in the next year. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Thanks for watching watching.